Okay, so we have a mock test. I thought I'll split that up into two parts. So we're going to look at the first part of this mock test, which is, I'm going to label that part one. Now, what I like about this test is just a, a wild, wild mix of various uh, problems involving limits, some simple, some difficult, but they have a really good mix of flavor to these questions. So let's quickly jump into the first question. And there you have it, calculate the following limits. The limit as y approaches two of y plus two over y squared plus five y plus six. Now notice our technique, do a direct substitution. Let's see what actually happens. So if I go up there and I just substitute, I'll have four over, now you've got y squared, which is two squared, which is four plus five times two, that's 10 plus six. So that gives me four all over 14 plus six, that's 20, which is over one fifth. Well behaved number, beautiful number. So by direct substitution, we know the limit there is one over five. So what it tells me is, interestingly enough, that here this function is well behaved around y equals two. Notice what I said, around y equals two. Interesting. Now, um, how else would you have seen this? Well, that's it, basically it. There's no singularities. There's no zero over zero. There's no unpretty stuff. It just gives you a beautiful one over five. Bang! That's the limit. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, what have we here? Square roots, square roots. So direct substitution, let's see. So there we'd have a three. And the bottom we'd have three times zero. That's root of one plus one as h tends to zero here. And that just gives me two. And that's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful answer. So that is going to give me three over two. Pretty sweet, isn't it? Ha ha. Nice question. Okie dokie. Let's have a look here. Limit of x minus 5 over x squared minus 25 as x approaches 5. Direct substitution gives me a 0 over 0. Ha ha. Now the flags go up. Unpretty. I like that word. Unpretty. Let's make that pretty. Right. So here we say now we look for possibility of factorization. So x approaches 5. x minus 5. And wa ha ha difference of two squares right so that goes that goes so what we're looking for is the limit as x approaches 5 over 1 over x plus 5 and that gives you 1 over 10 awesome pretty sweet hey right nice one that what about this one now watch here x minus 3 direct substitution 0 on the top Minus 3 squared, that's going to be 9. That's going to give you a minus 12 plus 3. And as I suspected, 0 over 0. And pretty. I think there was a song by the group TLC called Unpretty. I'm not sure. I hope I'm correct there. So let's look for factors then. So that is going to be limit as x approaches minus 3. So x plus 3 there. I would love for an x plus 3 to cancel, so that gives me x plus 3 into x plus 1. Let's double check that. Brilliant. Goes away into that direct. So let's write that one more step. 1 over x plus 1 as x approaches minus 3. That goes minus 3 plus 1 becomes minus 2, and the answer is a beautiful minus a half. Lovely. Oh, ho, 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 what do we have here? Let's do a direct substitution. That gives me four, that's two, that's zero over zero. <laughs> oh, no factorization, but we see the square root and what it says is rationalize. The word we use is rationalize. Some spell it with a Z or a Z. So let's go. So I'm gonna go limit as H tends to zero. I like to put this in brackets. I love using brackets. Beautiful, beautiful, all over h. And then what are we going to multiply? We're going to multiply by 1, but 1 in a fancy way. 
five h plus four, not minus two, but we're going to change the sign because of the additive conjugate. <laughs> yes, additive conjugate. Uh, we call that plus two. So we're just multiplying by one there, right? So it doesn't change the problem. So what do we have at the top? That is like a minus b into a plus b. Look at that. Root of five plus h minus two to root of five plus h plus two means square the first time. We write it like this. For clarity, so it's 5h plus 4 all squared with a big fat minus sign there, minus 4, because it's 2 squared. And what do we have at the bottom? It's just h into root of 5h plus 4 plus 2 as h tends to 0, right neatly. So what happens at the top? Root of 5h plus 4 all squared is just 5h plus 4. So that's going to give you a limit. The 4 is going to cancel. You know, with 5h, watch this beautiful there, and then you're going to have, mm, right, neatly, plus 4, plus 2, as h tends to 0. As we expect, the h is to cancel out. That takes away what we call the singularity in the problem, and then we substitute. As h goes to 0, that's root of 4, that becomes 2, 2 plus 2, that's 4, and that's 5 over 4. Beautiful. Nice, finite pretty number lovely are you following this nicely done Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. what's really happening here hey hey watch this as x approaches 1 minus what does it mean what does that mean so if you draw that and there's 1 over there what it really means is we are approaching 1 that's what 1 minus means from the left of 1 1 plus means to the right of one all numbers greater than one one minus all numbers less than one approaching one from the left so if you have a look at this very carefully you see a lot of people and we, i like this i like the question i love 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 the question because some people would have substituted minus one in there bang you'd be dividing by zero no as you approach x uh, one from the left you're approaching one so this becomes if you have a look here substitution that's nothing more than the limit as x approaches 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1. That's a finite number. That is 1 plus 6 all over 1. And then 3 minus 1 all over 7. 7 cancels out there. There's a 2 there. There's a 3 minus 1. <laughs> There's a beautiful 1. That's the answer. Please check this. Okay, that's awesome. Brilliant. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. Oh my goodness, this is such a beautiful color we see here. Let's have a look at this. H tends to zero of this. Yo ho ho ho, lots of square roots here. Well, only two. So as H tends to zero, you can see straight away here, we have a zero over zero case. Unpretty, man. So what do we have to do? We can't factorize, can we? No. So we essentially go and we rationalize, correct? So nice big beautiful square bracket root 6 minus root of 5 h squared plus 11 h plus 6 all over h right neatly and then we're going to multiply by the additive conjugate so that's going to give you 5 h squared plus 11 h plus 6 all over the same thing because we're multiplying by 1 so be careful not to chew, change the problem as h tends to 0. As previously, that becomes root 6 squared minus, I like to, ooh, this is important, you've got to have the brackets there, 5 h squared plus 11 h plus 6 all over this h. Watch the bracket. How do I get root 5 there? That is crazy, man. That should be a 6. 6. So that'd be six, just too excited, that's the problem. Root of five h squared plus 11 h plus six. Now watch what happens, the minus sign, if you have those brackets here, you're gone. Because that will take out that minus. And so as h tends to zero, and so that's gonna be the limit, watch this, minus, and it can take an h out as a common factor. Beautiful, minus h into 5h plus 11 all over h into that. Root 6, very important, 
plus root of 5 8 squared plus 11 h plus 6 all under that square root as h tends to 0 and notice that cancels out and as h tends to 0 tends to 0 that goes away that goes away that goes away so what we have here don't forget there's a minus sign in there so your final answer please check that is minus 11 all over root 6 plus root 6 will give me 2 root 6 please check that that is quite a beautiful question eh? a bit tedious in terms of writing you know this is quite a big numerator big long <laughs> But double check that for me, please. Thank you very much. Who, who, what do we have here? Direct substitution, you can see straight away sign of zero over zero. So we have a situation of zero over zero case. Again, what the word the word we use is and pretty, let's pretty it up. So what we do recall, and this is very important, that the limit of sine x over x look at your classwork as a x approaches zero is not undefined but one and i always said try to make this thing look like sine x over x and the way you do that see the argument is 3y so can we write this down watch limit sine of 3y mm -hmm. now this 4y this 4y i can write this as 3y watch this 1 over 4 now I introduced a 3 at the bottom that's changing the problem so I'm going to multiply this by 3 you see that 3 over 3 is 1 so I haven't changed the problem as y tends to 0 so if you look very carefully I can write this as 3 quarters limit sine of 3y over 3y as y tends to zero that looks like sine x over x so this is nothing more than three quarters times one because the limit of sine three y over three y as y tends to zero is one and your final answer is three y lovely pause it slow it down watch repeat before going ahead sweet okay what have we here now watch this right x approaches zero the new the denominator cos of zero is one so that appears to be fine and finite but the cosec bothers me there so if you look here if i write this as the limit as x approaches zero this is like x cosec 2x times one over cos of 5x this becomes the limit watch 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 x over sine 2x as x approaches 0 times 1 over cos 5x now this guy is well behaved as x approaches 0 our concern would be this chappy over here so this we can write as the limit as x approaches 0 would have been nice if I had a 2 year wouldn't you think so put it in there so that becomes 2x sine of 2x now you just can't just throw in a 2 there so what we have to do is because we throw in two there we're going to multiply the whole thing by half so we ensure that we don't change the problem and then we got one over cos of 5x so the limit now focus focus the limit as x tends to zero of 2x over sine 2x that's just going to give me one so essentially what i'm writing is a half limit 2x over sine 2x as x approaches zero times 1 over cos 5x 1 over cos 5x is 1 as x approaches 0 so this is fine now. that's okay what we need is this guy which is equal to 1 so your final answer is a half please take a closer look at that it's a beautiful problem nice who we love math that's the beauty of it the flight of an arrow all right so i hope you enjoyed that that was really cool and that's basically what you do now have a look at it what is our rule we see a limit problem we do a direct substitution we get a nice beautiful finite answer 
Nice, that's the limit. If it's an unpretty answer, then we look at factorization. Factorization doesn't work. We've got square roots popping in. We look at what we call multiplying by the additive conjugate rationalization. If that doesn't work, we've got sine, cos, and tan. Here we use sine x over x. The limit as x tends to 0 is going to be 1, not 0. All right, and then also know your trig function. Look at the behavior of the trig function, especially at pi by 2, at x equal to 0, at pi. Know the behavior. Know your graphs. Get a visual for things as well. You don't have to learn everything, but get a feel for things, how functions behave as they approach, say, uh, common values like 0, well, minus 1, 2, 3. Uh, you don't have to go learn up the whole periodic table to know chemistry. You know that. But get a feel for things. Play around with mathematics. You cannot read math. You have to do math. And I think that's absolutely important. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And we'll come back to you shortly.